How is this even running on a Mac? Is that gonna launch? Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Macs are not known for gaming. But I bought this M1 Max MacBook Pro about two years ago. And this thing is a beast. Except it can't run Windows. Or can it? See, a lot of people want to be able to game on Macs, even if Tim Cook is dying inside. So I'm going to see how much we can game on this thing. And even I was shocked. So let's go through the specs on this MacBook Pro. This is a late 2021 MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, the maxed out one, with about 32 gigs of shared memory. Now, looking at the benchmarks, this seems to be slightly more faster than an RTX 4070 laptop GPU. And looking at the raw teraflops, well, at 10.4 teraflops, it seems to be slightly more powerful than a PS5. Holy sh**, this is it. Apple has redeemed itself for gaming. This is amazing. It's a gaming beast. Well, hold your horses. While yes, theoretically, it is all these things, the main problem is the software. Or more, the lack of it. See, when it comes to native games on Mac, there's like two. More than likely, the game you want is not on Mac. But this is where emulation comes in. See, there are two ways of running Windows games on Mac. There's Parallels, which will run Windows 11 on your Mac, very useful, and there's Crossover, which is a compatibility layer between Windows and Mac, nerd stuff. What matters is we have two ways of running games on Mac, so if one fails, we have the other. So let's get to it. So there's a list of compatible games on the internet and which games run best through which method. That website is taken down. But we do have the internet archives and GTA 5 seems to run best through crossover. Now usually if a game runs through crossover, it will run better just because there's less jank. But Parallels is usually more compatible. We get to installing GTA 5, which I installed Steam, but I don't have GTA 5 on Steam. So I installed the Rockstar Games Launcher, which there's pre-configured bottles for it. And yeah, it works. Eventually, just very, very slowly. So I downloaded GTA 5 and it is running, but it's very, very jittery, like almost unplayable. So I changed up a bunch of settings and nothing. But looking up tutorials on the internet, it seems that using the keyboard causes massive jitters. So I ordered a game controller online. Listen, I just moved, okay? I don't have all my shit. And connected it up, but GTA 5 had stopped working on this bottle. It's very moody. So I reinstalled GTA 5, and even with the controller, it's still very jittery. Apparently, this is because of the shader cache compiling, but I'm here to tell you that this is not a very nice or playable experience. The launcher takes forever to load. Sometimes it crashes altogether, and sometimes GTA 5 just doesn't launch. And you cannot play online, so 5 out of 10. Okay, let's test some games I already have on Steam which let me pick some graphically intense games to really test this computer and test my patience. Cause I downloaded Arkham Knight onto Parallels and it just crashed straight up. So let's try Crossover instead. And it launched, which was quite surprising. And it ran. Although about 50% of the objects and textures are missing. You win some, you lose some. And Mortal Kombat 11 just wouldn't launch. Not really surprised, newer games are probably far more complicated for Crossover to handle. But here's something that might be an interesting twist. Well, apparently the Dolphin emulator is available on Mac. It is actually one of the most easy to use and reliable emulators I've ever used, and it works on Apple Silicon. So I downloaded it, and some ROMs, please don't ask me where I got them from, and voila, it runs almost perfectly. Like, I can't tell the difference. I ran Mario Kart Double Dash, which is one of my childhood favorites, Wind Waker, which is still a blast, and just for completion's sake, I ran Mario Kart Wii as well. This is where the game showed a few hiccups, but nothing unplayable. I'm also sure that you can connect remotes and stuff like that to your Mac, because Dolphin supports that, it's just that I never owned a Wii, so I don't have remotes and stuff like that. So around here, you know I'm a big Need for Speed fan, so we gotta try some classics. So I ran Most Wanted 2005, which by the way, this whole video I made on Most Wanted 2005 was captured on this computer, which is why I bought Parallels. It basically runs at max settings, but keep in mind that this is a game from 2005, built for the PS2 GameCube era. So to try something more modern, I loaded up Most Wanted 2012, which would not install in Crossover, but let's just say I have a unique installer. Which it was still broken on Windows 11, but it does install. And yeah, this game runs. We're at 1440p with medium to low settings, but something that's weird is that no matter how low I turn the settings or resolution, there's this weird jitter that does not seem to go away. In fact, every game I've tried so far on this Mac, there has been some weird jitter. It runs smoothly otherwise, but sometimes it stutters ever so slightly that it makes it not a very good experience. So since I have the Rockstar Games launcher, I forgot that I bought Red Dead 2 on PC as well. So I decided to give that a go, which is also a huge download. But after downloading it, I launched it and it said Windows 7 is not really supported. 
which this bottle is emulating Windows 7 64-bit. So I changed it to Windows 10 and still nothing. Well, it was worth a try. Unfortunately, I don't know what happened, but as soon as Red Dead Redemption 2 failed to launch, GTA 5 also failed to launch. Something about RDR 2 just made GTA 5 break, and this is the thing with crossover, or just this whole emulation stick. It's kind of niche, like, this is not how you want to play games, because it's very flaky. Launching GTA 5 when it worked was about a 10 minute process. Thank god for TikTok. So yeah, I had to delete the bottle, re-download, and reinstall GTA 5. Okay, so I love Breath of the Wild, but I played most of it on the CME emulator, the Wii U emulator, which, just side note to Nintendo by the way, you guys make great games, but they're absolutely crippled by the hardware they're on. Like, Breath of the Wild looks so much better running on the CME emulator at 4K 60fps than it ever did on the Switch running at 720p and dropping frames. And apparently the CME emulator works on Apple Silicon Macs. I had to try it. So I followed this tutorial from Andrew Tai, which shout out to him by the way, he's made like a ton of tutorials for Mac gaming, downloaded CMU, set it up and everything, but unfortunately I did not have a Breath of the Wild ROM. Now they are available on the internet, but they are encrypted, you can't just download them and play. And programs like CD Crypt are very much built for pros. Yeah, 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 I know I have a degree, but why I gotta use it? I literally spent hours just decrypting the files I downloaded to absolutely no avail. But I found out that the Wii U downloader is available for Mac, which downloads and decrypts the games. So finally we have Breath of the Wild and wow, this is running. Although it stutters periodically to build shader caches, which means that as time goes on, it should get less frequent. And yeah, it seems to have gotten less annoying as we've played on, but I'd have to play for literal hours to see if it's actually playable. Cause it's running at 1080p, at a respectable 40 FPS, but these stutters ain't it. And I don't know why CMU removed the ability to add other people's shader cache, cause only some of us have to suffer, and then you can use that person's pre-built shader cache, but not anymore. Okay, so we've tested a whole host of games from popular to niche to just whatever will work. And a few thoughts. Number one is Sutters and Jitters. This has been a problem on literally every game we tested, except for the GameCube titles. But come on, those are so old they'll run on f***ing smartphones. I know it's just a shader cache loading, but how long do you have to keep playing before it becomes anywhere near playable? Number two is Convenience. This is not for an average ordinary person trying to casually game in his free time. Like the amount of time it took for me to download builds from GitHub, download games, look up tutorials, and get every setting right, this takes hours. And I know if you've ran CMU on Windows, you do have to look up tutorials, and you probably would have run into the same decryption issues I ran into. But the end result is always a flawless experience at 4K 60fps on Windows. And number three is reliability. I don't know what kept breaking on GTA 5. Not only would it take forever to load, sometimes the Rockstar Games launcher would crash altogether. And yes, I do know that apparently the pirate version of GTA 5 works far better on Mac OS than the legal one. But A, we do not condone piracy, and B, I already tried that, but only a specific repack made by a specific person works on a specific version of crossover which is not this one. What I'm saying is while there have been tremendous strides to get Windows and Windows applications running on Macs, and it is amazing the work done on Wine to get at least this level of compatibility, don't go into Macs thinking, yeah I can do some light gaming on the side, cause you can't, especially online. That's completely off limits and it doesn't work. Apple has tried to make some strides with the game porting toolkit, which surprise surprise is based on crossover source code and Wine, and while people have seen some success running games on it, it's not really playable, and it's not supposed to be. This is a tool meant for developers to get a first taste of running on Mac. Not for end users to directly be running these games. So no, Apple is nowhere close to Windows and DirectX. At least not anytime soon. 